everybody, it's Roger and James here from the Disney Kingdom Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking all about Star Wars Battlefront 2. And there's been lots of rumours and stuff circling around online about whether or not the game has been abandoned by EA. Um, a lot of reports coming through that basically um, developers have been sort of abandoning it. Um, it basically looks like... I think it's like um, Criterion and also uh, Motive are no longer working on the game. There's this, only a small team working on it. They've moved on to other um, games. The new sort of... I'll be honest. The, they announced all that Han Solo season stuff. And I was va- very underwhelmed with what I saw. Um, in terms of the Han Solo season, yeah. I don't even know what's going on in the multiplayer. Um, yeah. The only thing that, that caught my attention and... Uh, made me very happy, actually, mm-hmm. was the inclusion of uh, Starfighter arcade mode. Yeah. You know, um, I've mentioned this in the review way back in the day. Uh, pretty much any time we talk about Battlefront, I'm like, I want, I want Starfighter arcade. It's the closest yeah. thing to an X-Wing game I'm going to get. So I am extremely happy to yeah. finally get that. However, um, that is a single person in amongst yeah. all of the people who've been hoping and praying and waiting for updates to the multiplayer, mm-hmm. uh, substantial updates to the multiplayer. And it really sounds like they're not going to get it. Even if these rumors don't pan into anything, even if it turns out that EA does have uh, a sizable team still working on it, we're never going to get uh, the multiplayer stuff that we would have gotten if the launch hadn't been so yeah. terribly botched, which is not the consumer's fault. Let's just, no. let's just be clear that this is yeah. EA reaping what they're sowing. But yeah, yeah. I mean, apparently Dice are working on Battlefield 2018, so there's not that many left. Um, their next few months are they just purely focus on cosmetic and small modes. They're not really allowing the the community and the developers to kind of intermingle too much. There's lots of bugs that need fixing that um, I've kind of gone to the back. And it's this kind of weird thing of, I think the trouble is, the community, this game was supposed to be this live service platform that we've, con- and it's now just sliding back into just becoming a normal, and I'll be honest, as far as them like abandoning the game, to me it's a bit like, you release it, you build up to a game, you release the game, you then go and we'll start working on another game uh, because the game comes out and that's the end of it. But this whole live service DLC stuff is, I would have, ex- I I was reading these reports and I'm like, I kind of would have expected this anyway. This I wouldn't expect all three com- divisions to still be having the same team on just updating it as those creating it. They're going to be working on, like you say, other projects or another start. Maybe it's that thing of, a lot of uh, there's a lot of expectation that this was going to get a lot more updates than it actually has done. Yes, and I think that's where it is. Instead, uh, you know, th- they would not have kept the entire creative team that created the game. There, there was always going to be a dedicated group uh, set for updates, and it would be much smaller than the game because you don't mm-hmm. need, you know, as many graphic designers. You don't need people creating assets like you do for the full game. They're already in the game. They they might yeah. need to do a couple of small things specific to a map or to a model or whatever, but you don't need the same number of people involved. Uh, so, yeah, they were always going to cut the size of the team. That's not not any surprise. But the amount that they have supposedly cut the team to is uh, into maintenance mode rather than yeah. creative mode. And I, I'm certain that if they hadn't botched this launch, if they had listened to the community during the beta, if they had not done the loot boxes that caused the backlash and then the tone-deaf response to the backlash uh they could have kept a larger team involved there would have been more people playing the game they could have made revenue off of whatever form of monetization they had you know cosmetic crates or whatever like overwatch does yeah and that we would still be talking we would have had more seasons by now because they you know they lost what two three seasons worth of trying to fix the loot boxes yeah um so yeah if they had not screwed up so so massively in the beginning we would have a very different story now it still might not be you know the number one game in the market because yeah. no one could have predicted what was going to happen with fortnite and PUBG and how the market was going to shift from the traditional deathmatch environment to the battle royale environment mm. but they could have at least had that niche and yeah i mean they've got no reason to continue con- creating no. content 
um, you know, the the community has backlashed so hard against them that it's become, you know, the, they're not allowed to speak with the community. They monitor Reddit very, very closely. Why would they continue? I mean, yeah. it, and, and and let's be, you know, I've already said this, but just to be clear, we're not blaming the community for that. Yeah. We're blaming EA for that. Um, and uh, they, this game pisses me off so much. It's one of those really big things. To me, it's like it's a seven-month-old game. The community, you know, every game has cycles. And the, you know, the excitement when it come out um, would be at a peak and it would slowly put you off. And the people that are playing it now, you know, there's going to be that different zone. To me, I look at it and go, well, you know, last month I was playing, you know, God of War. The month before I was playing something else. And generally, most people move around a bit, you know, it's, you know, Fortnite. Things. And, yeah, you're going to have a, a hardcore community playing it constantly. But these seasons are supposed to bring everyone back in. And I fired it up. And I'm like, I mean, I enjoyed that. E- I mean, I thought that Ewok mode was great fun. And I really enjoyed playing it. But then they took it off again. And you're like, well, why, are you, why did you take it away? Oh, we're bringing it back. We should have just left it. Don't piss, you know, all this, like, limited time events and bringing them in and taking them out. And it's like, you've put all that work in just to give it to us for a couple of weeks. Just bring it. The game should have just be left with it. Well, and I think this is kind of the story of the entire game is that they're doing things in this game that other companies are doing, but they're doing it without understanding why it works for other companies. Mm. The loot boxes, for instance. And sorry to harp on the same point over and over again. You know, we've we've said repeatedly, if they had done the loot boxes like Overwatch or Fortnite, well, Fortnite doesn't do loot boxes, but other games in the genre that do loot boxes with purely cosmetic stuff, this would never have happened, and people would still probably be latched onto it the way that they are with Overwatch. And other companies do these events. Heck, we were talking about a couple weeks ago the Fortnite Infinity War, uh, War with Thanos. Obviously, it's going to come back. It was a limited time event. It drew people and drew us into playing yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and it, it'll come back probably when the Blu-ray comes out, and then back at mm-hmm. like you know when Avengers Four comes out, and so on. And EA tried to mimic something like that with the Ewoks, and and they've done it yeah. in previous iterations. Even the first Battlefront from the relaunch had stuff like this, where they'd have a mode that would kind of come back periodically. But the way they did it, the way it just kind of came and went with very little fanfare. It's like we see other companies doing this, so we're going to mimic it without understanding uh, mm. what draws people in to play these events and and why these events are limited and kind of a release cadence for when the events are supposed to come yeah. back. And for a company that is as big as EA, the the amount or how much they don't understand about their own industry just... Mm. Boggles my mind. I think, like for me, it's like you know, they put the, the that uh, jumper mode in. That was that was a bit of fun. You know, they then put in the Ewok mode. You know, the trouble is the game has suffered from that the whole of Battlefront from way back even the, the, on the last edition. The game has suffered from not enough content. So to give someone content and then take it away, it's like no, you didn't have enough in here the first time. So you shouldn't be taking it back away. You can keep adding to it. And I think people have been like listening. You know, the community. You know, they've been saying, oh, we're going to be supporting this and all that. It's like, you know, these live services and like, I'm an old fashioned gamer where game comes out, game goes through, I see credits, I move on to the next. That's how I play games. People are changing, but I think, you know, you're not going to get that kind of long life out of these games that maybe that they thought they could do. And they, they, they've messed it up. They've now, and I would, if I was EA, if I was at the bosses, I'd be thinking, yeah, right, we're pulling all, we're pulling all support. We're not wasting any more effort and money on investing in this game that's not going to bring in the rewards. This is a lame duck. Go into maintenance mode. Give them a few little bits. Do what we've already planned and maybe got already going, but slow it down. And put, like, as a business person, that's what I'd do. Yeah, and I mean, there's no reason for them to continue supporting this. We we have no idea how things would have been if the launch hadn't been so bad. This could very easily, if they had listened to uh, feedback during the beta, not just for the loot, uh, loot crates, but also, you know, uh, the squad system, which is ridiculously dumb the way they implemented yeah. it, and, you know, the the lack of modes and all this this stuff. If they had done those properly, yeah... This game, we could be talking about this game in the same way that we talk about Overwatch or, yeah. or the Call of Duty franchise or something and being like, all right, we're getting excited for the next season 
of new stuff. We're waiting for the reveals on what kind of armor is going to be popping out, what you can kit out your clone troopers or your stormtroopers with, and we're not. And it and but it certainly had that potential. Yeah. They could have if yeah. they had done it right. If they had tried. If they had actually listened to the community and. And instead of just going, ha ha, no, we know what what you actually want, and what you want is to to spend money, and then to 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 take what the community said and go, well, we don't want to give you a pink Vader, and like you know, no one asked for a pink Vader. Yeah. That's not what we were asking yeah. for at all. So I mean, this is like this thing like with the Solo season. You know, it's like if you got Solo, a brand new Star Wars movie. You know, you should be having if you're gonna do proper DL. You know, this is where had it been a DLC pack where you paid for it. Where you've you had skins for a young Han Solo, young Chewbacca, young thing, introduced a couple of the other characters, bring in some different ships, bring in some different maps. And I mean everyone complained about the bat the season pass from the first game. That game to me was far superior than this kind of wishy washy approach that they did last time because when I got a new pack and I got the new you know, you got that new pack, you felt like you were getting something that was you know, when that Rogue One hit and you were running around on Scarif and you had the new mode and you had the, the playable heroes, I felt like I was getting new this hand this solo one, I'm like going, this feels like a mobile like what I'd expect in Galaxy of Heroes. It just didn't nothing here was to bring me back in. Well, again, though if they hadn't screwed up so much at the launch, it would be a very different story yeah. now. Because um, I, for one, am thrilled of them getting rid of the whole season pass garbage. Mm. If they had done this properly, what we'd be looking at right now is new maps, new modes, free for everybody. Mm. And then, you know, a new skin for Han Solo, a new skin for Chewbacca. Um, and those are either, you get them from loot crates that you'll get, incrementally throughout the game or you can drop like 20 bucks and and get those now but you'd have that choice and the people buying the loot crates would subsidize the cost for everybody else yeah. and if that had worked properly if they had not screwed around and tried to make the crates pay to win then it could yeah. have worked it's just now the one, yeah. would it have worked we don't, don't know. know but it certainly worked just fine for overwatch and also know? just in general i mean the whole industry now is in a you know what happened with battlefront is it set off just a chain of things of countries around the world of blocking loot boxes and changing rules and you know the whole process has just been essentially this was the catalyst that just blew it open and so I would argue that you know other games have done this, but this was the this was the one, and it never recovered. And so when they when I see reports of them saying it's been abandoned, it's like, well, yes, I can see why, and I'd have expected that. And also, the this is seven months after the game's been released. This is what happens. It might be a live service game, but this is not GTA Online. No, and. But it could have been. It could have been. If they had paid attention to how the model actually works in the real world, then it could have been. Mm. Because the second you put pay-to-win strategies into the loot boxes, even small ones, like the yeah. very minor upgrades that the star cards give you, you change the nature of the game. Mm. People have shown that they will pay for cosmetic loot boxes. The they have no yeah. impact on the gameplay whatsoever, but people will spend money on it because they like the way the character looks. They want that prestige associated with it. And then other gamers, such as myself, would be like, "No, I'll yeah. take the free ones that you give as the the you know yeah. the free the the try to get you hooked one, and I and I will never spend another cent on it." But that's fine because there are these other gamers who will drop literally thousands of dollars on it and pay for the rest of us. Mm. That that is literally how mobile gaming works. It is literally how loot boxes work in other games. EA tried to get greedy. They tried to to do uh, game changing alterations in the loot boxes, and it bit them in the arse. And I have zero sympathy for no. them in regards to this. And they are one hundred percent to blame for why this game is no longer going to be supported. And yeah, I mean, ah, personally, so for, frustrating. Yeah. Personally for me, it's like, Oh, this like pay to win and loop. It's like I paid 79 99 for the deluxe edition of oh, the elite edition. I paid 
money for this game. So therefore, it's like, no, I've given you £80. Please give me some stuff, please. It's like, oh, here's £80. Oh, you can buy some extra stuff. Like, no, 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 no. You can't charge £80 for an Elite Edition and then go, oh, you, it didn't work. It's like you do the Fortnite where you, you, you do it one way or the other. You got me 80 quid. Now you have to provide me with content. Not. And unfortunately, they tried doing it and it didn't work. And so well, they've... But that that again just goes back to whole season pass thing. Yeah. You know, um, we spent sixty dollars or eighty quid on the game, and you know, and then on top of that, they wanted for Battlefront yeah. One another uh, whole other games worth of price for mm. the expansion. Yeah, packs. it was way too expensive that one. So it it's a, a dozen one way, yeah. twelve another. You know, they either way they're trying to get more money out of us. I prefer this way for Battlefront 2 because it it gives us... Well, sorry, again, taking out the pay-to-win yeah. aspect of the loot boxes. Uh, I prefer this method because it means that other players can pay a bunch of money if that's what they're inclined to do, and I don't have to pay a cent yeah. past that initial registration fee of buying the game. And it, it lets the player choose how much they're willing to spend on this season content. And... You know, uh, I never bought the season pass for for Battlefront One. Obviously, even if it had had a single player mode, I wouldn't have anyway. But yeah, th this meant that there was an equal level playing field in terms of maps. I didn't have to worry about playing with you. Do I have the Endor map? Yeah. Do I have this ma next map? No, because they're all provided to all players. But again, <clears throat> to beat a dead horse and then kill it again and then beat the dead horse some more. They screwed it up so badly that we yeah. would have no idea if it could have conceivably worked no. in this model with Star Wars. And I think it could have. Mm. But, but no. Uh, On that note, guys, let us know in the comments below or in social media what you guys think. Do you think that EA abandoned it or is it just the general life cycle of the game? Love to know your thoughts. Check us out over at thiskingdom.com. You can follow, subscribe. Um, James, where can they find you? You can find me at HeroicLegacy.com. On that note, guys, thank you very much for watching. We'll be back soon. Laters. May the Force be with you for Always. $8. Yes. Or or if you wait long enough, I mean, I even got the Ultimate Edition on Xbox One for, I mean, for $3.79 about a year later. So, yeah, keep going. <laughs> I, bought it, I bought it twice. <laughs>